everybody, my name is Gati, and today I will be talking about gravity and the effects of it when it's not there on the human body. So what is gravity? Gravity is the mutual attraction between any two bodies in the universe. So we are held on to this earth by gravity. That's what makes sure we don't just float off into the sky. We also pull on the earth, but since we're so small compared to the huge earth, it really doesn't affect the earth that much. We have evolved to depend on gravity. It's always there. For this reason, when gravity isn't there, such as when we're in space, then it can affect how our body fluids work, it can affect our muscles, and it can affect our bones. So my first point is that gravity affects our body fluids. And when it's not there, our body fluids don't work as they're supposed to work. The fluid in our inner ear helps us determine if we're balanced or not. When we're standing upright, it tells us we're standing upright. When you're doing a handstand and you're upside down, it tells you you're upside down. And it's very important. However, in space, that inner ear fluid just like wobbling all over the place and it doesn't really work. So astronauts experience dizziness and nausea. Another fluid that floats all over the place is the fluid in our optic nerve. So the optic nerve is a nerve behind the eye. And when fluid in there starts going all over the place and not acting like it's supposed to, it can start building up behind the eye. And this can cause permanent eye damage. Another fluid that floats around everywhere is the blood that circulates all around our body. So normally, the heart pumps blood up to the upper torso, the arms, and the face. And gravity usually brings some of that blood down to the legs. However, in space, gravity is no longer pulling as much blood down to the legs. It's all going to the upper torso, and the face, and the arms, and this is called puffy face syndrome in astronauts. This is bad because the body starts reading, it's like, oh, whoops, there's too much blood here, we need to get rid of it. So the blood volume starts decreasing by as much as 22%. This can lead to dehydration and other illnesses that are caused by not having enough blood in the body, because blood is important. Another, another body part that is affected is the muscles. That is my second point. So floating through space, Seems like a dream come true. Has anyone seen the movie Gravity? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You, saw, you saw those astronauts just floating through space without caring. Well, they had a care, but they, they seem pretty free and happy up there. Well, that floating comes for a price. Normally, on Earth, our muscles keep us balanced. Okay? Our muscles make sure we can stand and pull stuff and lug weight around. In gravity, there's nothing pulling us down, though. So our muscles don't really get that much of a workout as they need. So they start to atrophy. Has anyone here ever had a cast yes. on their arm or leg? And when that cast got pulled off, do you see how limp and tiny and weak that arm looked compared to your other arm? That's called muscle atrophy. So that means the muscle wasn't being used enough so it started disappearing. You either use it or lose it. Now imagine that happening to all the limbs, the all, both hands, both legs. That seems kind of bad. But it doesn't seem as bad. I mean, sure, you lose some muscle mass, but does it really matter? Well, another muscle that's affected is the heart. Because, as I mentioned before, there's less blood to pump around and less effort needed to pump it around. That means the heart also starts getting weaker. And this could be permanent. And this is bad. You can lose up to 20% of your muscle mass in space. My third point is that bones are also affected. So along with muscles and fluids, bones suffer too. Normally, on Earth, I'm saying that a lot, normally, you stand up, your bones keep you upright against the constant pressure of gravity. But in space, it really doesn't have to do that. So body says, okay, I don't need to put as much effort in maintaining this. So the bones start getting weak and porous. 
Anyone here know a really old person who's all bent over and their bones are always hurting? Mm -hmm. It's because their bones are coarse. <laughs> You're not that old. Okay, so your, that means your bones are porous and weak, and that's happening to young 20, 25, 30-year-old astronauts in space. And they're having like the bones of an 80-year-old person, because every month you spent in space, you lose 1% of your bone mass, I mean bone density. So in conclusion, if we want to send astronauts into space right now, they would arrive blind, they would arrive weak and brittle boned, and they'd be sick and they'd have puffy face syndrome, it'd be all bad news. So why do we keep on sending them up there if we know all these bad things are going to happen to them? Right now, there are three astronauts in space. Today is their 115th day in space. They could be suffering from everything I just mentioned, yet we keep on sending them up there. Why are we doing this? We are doing this because we want to learn. As a species, we've always wanted to learn more. We explored all the continents, and we found out how birds fly, and then we made planes, and then eventually rockets. We went to the ocean floor to see what was there, and now we want to explore stuff that's outside this world. That's why we want to go to space. A Star Trek once said, space is the final frontier. So we keep on sending these astronauts into space so we can learn from them. And this knowledge can help make prolonged space missions safer. So that means if we tried sending someone to space, and then we can figure out how to cancel some of these undesirable physical effects like puffy face syndrome and loss of bone density, then we can make things a lot easier to, for everyone. Plus, it can also help here on Earth. MIT is right now developing a spacesuit. It's not like the big, bulky, gas-filled white things you see astronauts wearing these days. It's more skin tight, and it's more futuristic looking. And it helps not only in space, but also here. They found that it could also be used as a really good emergency torque net, and it can help save people from blood loss and dying like in shark attacks or construction accidents. And this is just one example of how space technology can also be used here on Earth. And someday, sending astronauts in space over and over again, we may find out a way to actually send a batch of healthy astronauts who are still healthy when they go down to Mars and start colonizing it. So thank you for listening. Good job. will be my friend Savni. She is an eighth grader at Marshall Simons and she's a very great writer. I hope, and she's talking about tardigrades today. I hope you'll enjoy her speech as much as you enjoyed mine.